you were being accused of being not just a criminal, but a terrorist, a biological terrorist, like you're a James Bond villain <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> that lives in an ice, ice castle in Antarctica, right. that you are now a James Bond villain, yeah. biological terrorist, uh, Peter Troes. Uh, yes, yeah, so I was just my, my own business, hanging out in my bedroom one day, and uh, I, I want to say it was a couple weeks later, um, it, it wasn't, I, 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 you know, I'm a little rusty at the timeline, but... Uh, uh, one of the officers called me, Officer Barnes, a decent guy, I believe he's the chief of police now, and he's like, oh, hey, Pete, how's it going? I'm like, oh, how's it going, Officer Barnes? Uh, how can I help you? And he's like, well, hey, man, yeah, just so you know, we're not gonna, we're not looking to arrest you, we're not gonna rappel down from your roof and drop in, yeah. uh, but <laughs> you do have some charges filed, something about bioterrorism, I'm like, I'm like, what? <laughs> what? I, you know, I thought it was a joke, like, that's the most preposterous uh, charge I've ever heard of. Welcome to the Liberty Lawyer Podcast. I'm Nick Somberg. I'm your host. Today we have our first guest, Peter Troes. This was a case that I represented about two years ago. It was one of the craziest situations ever. Um, Mr. Troes was charged with making a biological terrorist threat and served with papers that said he's facing life in prison for making an alleged joke about COVID. Real stuff here. So, Peter, how you doing? I'm doing great, Nick. How are you? I am great. Um, so why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Um, yeah, so I've kind of got a weird life story. I went to um, University of Michigan for undergrad, then got out, moved to Japan, and then I went to pursue medicine in um, the Caribbean at Ross University School of Medicine. Uh, didn't really end up staying in that career, and I you know, changed paths to try to open marijuana dispensaries, and now I'm involved in politics. So you have experience in medicine. You have medical training. Yes, and common sense. <laughs> <laughs> and are you part of any terrorist organizations? No. <laughs> Not that you know, of, right? <laughs> so this happened back in 2020 for the, the Trump election. So you went in there and you tried to vote. You tried to turn in your ballot. Is that right? Uh, yes, I, I tried to turn in my absentee ballot so it could be counted. Okay. And you were following her rules. You were wearing the mask. Yes. And were, did she accept your ballot as is? Yeah, so my ballot was in the envelope. I wasn't sure if I'd have to feed it through the machine myself, so it wasn't sealed, and I handed it to her so she could count my vote. You handed her the, the ballot, and did she accept it? Was it acceptable to her? She accepted it, and she, she left. Okay. How did you get in trouble? Well, I, I was still staying there talking to Officer Alonzi um, about some nonsense, uh, probably the COVID policies, and Tammy returned, and she said that I had not sealed my absentee ballot form. So you gave correct. her the, your valid absentee ballot in an envelope, but it wasn't sealed. The envelope wasn't sealed. Correct. And she wanted you to personally seal it. Um, yes, which is the law in her defense. Okay. And what happened next? So she asked me to, to lick it to seal it. And I was, you know, I was kind of it, just preposterous because I'm supposed to wear this mask to protect myself against this huge biological threat, and now I'm supposed to remove it yes. to lick something that she had personally handled and disappeared with right. to put my life in danger of this, this dangerous So she plague. herself is breaking the COVID religion rules, uh, right? <laughs> because you can't yes. touch things, you can't have an open air to your face, and she puts the rule in place that you must wear a mask, but now she's asking you to not only break her own rule, but to stick your tongue out and start licking something that has been in her hands where God knows where, where they've been. It seems a little inconsistent, doesn't it? Yeah, very inconsistent, <laughs> um, as is the COVID religion. Um, <laughs> yes. So I read the police report, and the police officer included on there that you proceeded to vigorously lick the envelope. Uh, that is correct. So are you now known in the Kego Harbor or the area for your, for, your, for your talents. <laughs> I mean, a few people have approached me, but I haven't had a chance to actually demonstrate it yet. <laughs> it's a lot to live up to. So you lick the envelope. Yes. It, it, yeah, yeah. Vigor it, vigorously? Uh, yeah, my, my mouth was a little bit dry. I was nervous <laughs> about the election, and I was in a hurry, you know, and I, it did take me a little bit to get enough saliva to try to seal the envelope. And, you know, I, I licked it, put myself in extreme personal risk to get my vote to <laughs> count for, for President Trump, our rightful president. And she once again accepted the envelope and disappeared. Okay, so you, you hadn't heard anything. No, but she it. she's saying that you said something when you threw the envelope down or you gave it to her. Um, yeah, I was speaking to myself. I was muttering under my breath, like, oh, you know, there's some COVID for you, Pete. OK, like, so like, what a stupid policy out of sarcasm, out of and criticism, criticism, 
the hypocrisy of the rules, you kind of make a joke like, yeah, here's some COVID for you. Uh, whoop you do cor Correct. I wasn't even looking at anybody when I said I was, I was looking down and speaking to myself. And now she doesn't say anything? No. You don't get tackled by police officers? Uh, no, I actually stayed there and talked to Officer Lazzi a little bit longer. Okay. Uh, that officer didn't do anything, he, say anything? He, if he witnessed the crime, he certainly didn't make a scene of it. <laughs> so I was free to go. You're free to go. You, you, you cast your vote to your knowledge. Yep. And when did you find out, how did you find out that you are now being, because of that, you were being <laughs> accused of being not just a criminal, but a terrorist, a biological terrorist, like you're a James Bond villain <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> that lives in an ice, ice castle in Antarctica, right. that you are now a James Bond villain, yeah. biological terrorist, uh, Peter Troes. Uh, yes, yeah, so I was just minding my own business, hanging out in my bedroom one day, and uh, I, I want to say it was a couple weeks later, um, it, it wasn't. I, 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 you know, I'm a little rusty on the timeline, but uh, uh, one of the officers called me, Officer Barnes, a decent guy, I believe he's the chief of police now, and he's like, oh, hey, Pete, how's it going? I'm like, oh, how's it going, Officer Barnes? Uh, how can I help you? And he's like, well, hey, man, yeah, just so you know, we're not, gonna, we're not looking to arrest you. We're not going to rappel down from your roof and drop in. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> you do have some charges filed, something about bioterrorism. I'm like, I'm like what? <laughs> what? I, you know, I thought it was a joke. Like, that's the most preposterous uh, charge I've ever heard of. And then you sent it to me. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> Immediately. And what did I do? I don't remember. Uh, I mean, you had to be in complete shock because it's, it's got to be the most ridiculous charge you've ever dealt with. Or uh, up there at up least. Up there. Yeah. Top, top three, <laughs> top five. And I took that case. I took that one pro bono. Of course you did. Because <laughs> this was a hill worth dying on, I, I feel like. Which I appreciate. Sure. <laughs> and so when you're charged with a felony, you have the preliminary exam stage. Yeah. So the government... Um, has to establish at least probable cause that a crime even occurred. Okay. So this was all over Zoom mm -hmm. back then. Mm -hmm. And I remember Tammy took the stand and under oath basically admitted that she handled this envelope that she hallucinated had COVID and then remained at the polling center for the remainder of the day yes. handling thousands of ballots yeah. Interacting with hundreds, if not thousands, of people. Yes. Which, in my opinion, didn't she just commit biological terrorism? Uh, to yeah. the put if I'm a terrorist, then she's like a, a genocider or something. <laughs> she's you know, like, way worse if than you, me. If you potentially <laughs> affected one person, she just protect, potentially affected thousands. Y yes. Yeah, then she proceeded to travel throughout the state and hide in her vacation home or something. After I remember that. that. Yeah, she's she like, it's really a plague bearer. It's a, a great burden on her society. So I think she just wanted attention. I think she wanted to, to get back at you somehow. Yeah, yeah, contention and control. She wanted her 15 most minutes. Likely. Yep. So the case got bound over, though. So you went from the district court level up to the circuit court, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, back home for me. Oakland County, <laughs> <laughs> Oakland County Prosecutor's Office, you know, these people mm -hmm. decided that this is a good use of government resources, mm -hmm. all these people's salary and time during COVID, by the way, Mm -hmm. where people are struggling and there's resources are being rationed that they are using taxpayer dollars to now escalate you to um, the circuit court level and say, yes, we're going to proceed. We're going to put this man through trial. Uh, yeah, it's very flattering to know that I'm so important. <laughs> so after the case was bound over, Oakland County Prosecutor's Office actually more than doubled down, quadrupled down and you found out that they were now upping the threat against you to life in prison is that correct uh yes it is and tell us about how you felt to receive that actual real document <sighs> well you know it's easy to laugh about now and laugh about in front of your friends but it's extremely stressful because you know i know firsthand how absolutely corrupt our courts are and how you, you know it's very hard to actually exert your rights but you had a document in your hand that said, sir, we will put you in a cage for the rest of your life for telling this joke. I mean, you could rape three people. You could rob a bank and not have a threat of life in prison over your head. You have, you have to kill somebody. It's killed somebody or attempted murder. That's how you get up to a life. You would think and you would hope. So they and what did it feel like to have that document in your hand? Like, wow, these people are serious. Oh, it, it makes you feel sick. I mean, you, I mean, you actually you I mean. It, it, I'm laughing about it now, but you, I mean, you feel nauseous all the time. It's hard to sleep. It really, it does ruin your quality of life as well as all the the machinations of having to go through court and you know participate in all these Zoom meetings. It just takes up your time and it, it really wears you down. And you know the, the the process is the punishment. Yes, the process is the punishment. And if you didn't have a good friend who's a lawyer, 
that shows the, how much power the government has. It's disgusting. That they can, by the stroke of a pen, they can cost you extreme amount of resources, waste your time, destroy your life, hurt your reputation. Yeah, that's not how it should be. And uh, let's talk about why. So you you were a, this COVID was a felony, right? Terrorist threats are felonies. And they said, now you are a fourth time habitual offender. And that's what got, got you the life max. But what were those other three felonies? Well, I'm, I'm a very dangerous man, Nick, as you, as you know. I'm a medical doctor who sold medical marijuana under Section A of the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act in a licensed uh, medical marijuana dispensary in Holly, Michigan. But uh, the court didn't want to give me a hearing on that, so I'm a convicted felon for something that's not even a parking ticket anymore, possession and distribution of marijuana to marijuana patients. How long did you fight? So you were charged. You, you tried to act within the rules at the time. You thought you were acting within the rules in time in Correct. good faith. They charged you with m- many felonies. You ended up taking a, a plea to three. Is that right? Four. Four. To four. Yeah. With no jail time. Correct. And at the time when you made that decision, you felt like that was your best move. It, it was because they were not going to allow me to even make a defense. And you fought them for years. Eight and a half years. You paid. I could have gone to law school myself, represented <laughs> myself, <laughs> become a lawyer, point. represented myself, lost my case, served my time, and got out and probably expunged my record by now. <laughs> and to this day, we're getting close, but you still have the th- you still have these felonies on your record. Uh, yeah, I've got a Google calendar set up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a right. couple more years. Yeah, but because of that baloney, now you're a fourth time habitual offender terrorist. I'm a dangerous man, and that got you life. Yes. Okay. What happened with the case? Did you did you have to go on probation? What did you go to jail? What, how did the case end up? Well, I had the best attorney in the state, you know, Nick Somberg, my good friend, and uh, yeah, the whole thing was thrown out. It was, it was, you know, everything was taken care of uh, quickly and professionally for me. Um, yeah, and the case was dropped. And do you remember how it got thrown out? Oh, I don't. You want to refresh my so, memory? So <laughs> very, very. Social media is a powerful thing. Oh yeah. Nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> and all I did was I took their paper that threatened you with life in prison, and I put it on my Facebook. And I tagged Oakland County Prosecutor's Office <laughs> and said, hey, look what they're doing to this guy. Up Life in prison for making a joke about COVID. Whether you did or you didn't, yeah. life in prison. Yeah. Yep. And I think it was like a day or two. So usually, like, a lawyer has to, like, file a motion and a brief. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, like, do some research <laughs> on, like, Westlaw, LexisNexis, <laughs> like, find some court precedent. Mm-hmm. Um, I just took a picture of the paper and put it on my Facebook. I was like, hey, look, look everyone. Mm-hmm. Look at what they're doing to Peter. Mm-hmm. And you must have got to somebody. Yeah, yeah I think it's a, a brilliant strategy because you know the, the laws sometimes matter in court, but yeah, the, the court of public opinion. Always but they they the believed in their case. They were gonna they were gonna see it through. Yeah, they're they, sociopaths. They 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 wanted to. They and and the thing is that the government has no consequences. Yeah, they can do all of this, which is essentially filing a false police report. In my opinion, it's malicious prosecution. In Absolutely. my opinion, but you can't sue a prosecutor. Extremely difficult. Mm. Basically impossible. And I think that's something that needs to change in the country is that if you win at trial, you should maybe get your money back yeah. at least. Yeah. Um, and there should maybe be some consequences for the people that brought that. Yeah. And that's the whole problem with government. We, there's no consequences for wrongdoing. There's not a lot that you, that you can do when you are targeted by the government, but you can help your fellow man by doing jury duty. And jury nullification is a real thing, and it needs to become more popular. What is jury nullification? It is when the jury disagrees with the n- – not the – it's when the it's when the jury disagrees with the law in question. Like you know, it should not be. If you get busted for having you know marijuana, they they don't think that marijuana should be illegal. They will just fail to convict. It's it's really our our final line of defense against tyranny, at least in the courts. So a jury, because a jury, their verdict is final. Mm-hmm. So somebody, so there could be a statute or a law that says marijuana is illegal, and somebody could say, yeah, I had marijuana, but it could just take one person on that jury to say, no. Not yeah. guilty. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know why people look at jury duty as like such a chore. When else do you get to be more powerful than the police, the prosecutor, all, you're the, the state, House, and, and Congress? You know, you're the, you're the most powerful person in the courtroom that day as a juror. It only takes one to hang a jury. Now, I, I tell them that in an opening statement. I can't tell them the last part, <laughs> but um, they are the most. You are, I wish I could be on a jury. Me too. And you could, you could save somebody's life mm-hmm. and they won't let us be on juries for different different yeah, reasons or, or convict someone who who deserves it or, too. or convict yeah. somebody who deserves it but as i've said in other other episodes like most of the time i'm defending victimless crimes mm-hmm. if if our society if, if a crime where would require a victim if people if 
if the crimes are for hurting people, stealing, defrauding, you know, I'd be a really good prosecutor because mm-hmm. I can't stand that stuff. I, yeah. You know, I, I'm like, hey, don't, you know, leave people, leave people alone. You know, don't, don't mess with their stuff. Mm-hmm. But most things I defend are these victimless crimes. Like, oh, sir, you have the wrong plant in your pocket. You have the wrong powder or substance or, mm-hmm. oh, you don't have the right paperwork in your car dri- driving around. And, yeah. and people get caught up and become and, criminals yeah. who are not. And, and the fact that they're felonies is preposterous, you know, because if, if you were starting a country, you'd be like, oh, what should be a felony? Rape, murder, maybe mm-hmm. theft over some amount, arson. Other than <laughs> that, you know, everything should be like a civil infraction maybe. You know, like the, the fact that you can go to prison for multiple years for things that don't hurt anybody or, you know, or just, you know, it could be a paperwork error. It's, it's, it's preposterous. Thank you for watching this episode of the Liberty Lawyer Podcast. If you enjoyed this interview here today and our content, please subscribe and we'll see you next time.